I'm Alex Flores. Okay. We are with Nelson George. He's the director of the uh, Ballerinas Theo. And um, thank you so much for that film. It's really sometimes hard to find films that is um, uh, represented by black people, especially in this area of ballet, right. where we don't have a lot of um, women of color right. or men of color right. dancing. Right. So what is it that motivates you to do this documentary? Well, you know, I, I met Misty at an event, and um, I'd heard about her. Uh, I really didn't know much about ballet. But uh, I thought, wow, this is an interesting story. This woman is in this world that's very, very different. There's very few black people, especially in the classical ballet world, at a company like ABT, which is internationally known. So um, I sort of thought about it over a while. I went to see her, and um, she danced a, a Firebird at the Metropolitan Opera House. So it's very impressive. Right. Yeah. But um, she also got injured during that time. And I thought, well, here's someone who's reached a high, high point in the world of ballet. And now she's at a turning point where, wow, she may never dance again. So I thought, if she would let me, this, there's an interesting story to see what happens if she can come back. And so she was open to that. And, and so that began the journey. It was really a uh, curiosity of it's a human story as opposed to a dance story. When you just see someone who's an artist uh, who's very, very, you know, reaches a pinnacle. When she did the Firebird, it was the height of her career at that point. And then, boom, for had to pull from right from under you, boom. I thought, well, there's a story. And then, we just kind of followed her for a couple of years, and what's happened is that the story's taken an unexpected happy turn. It went from a sad story, as you see in the footage, you know, how the doctor's visits, you can see she's in pain, and she was able to come all the way back, and at the same time, not only uh, came back, but in fact, it superseded any of her expectations. Well, and what is it, the point that you start covering, the lack of, of black women? Right. In ballet, what is it like? Well, for, the for, for, for I mean, it's really Misty's call. When we were doing it, Misty said to me, "One of the things we really want to look at is this idea of the black ballerina in this white ballet world." And so we uh, interviewed a number of people who were at ABT previously: uh, Victoria Rowell, um, Robin Gardenhire. Um, so we wanted to frame her in that world, right? And at the same time. Um, you know, give a little bit of a history of the context. Uh, Deirdre Kelly, who's a mm -hmm. critic here in Toronto, gave us context for the role of body image because a lot of what's used against black women is their butts too big or their breasts are too big or they're too curvy. And so uh, it was kind of a combination of, of race and body image that really drove that narrative. Wow. And how you been feeling so far with the film? Has been the audience receiving it? Well, it's been, I think the most profound thing has been very many young people. We've had families, um, kids as small as five, like right there, you see this woman with her child. That's a pretty typical. We've had a lot of families or fathers and daughters or mothers and daughters or entire ballet classes of like girls as little as eight, nine, ten. And it's very rare that a documentary is going to attract that demographic, of Misty's appeal. And so the story has been very much feel like it's an inspirational story. It's a story about something that couldn't happen that does happen. And that was really what we went for. And uh, we seem to be achieving it and reaching really young people, which is really quite powerful. But it's important. Yeah, I really appreciate the film a lot. And uh, for our black audiences, for our all Latino and women of color out there, yes, we can do it. Thank you so much Thank for this so film. Thank you so much. Appreciate and, uh, it. And it's going to be presented here at the Hardlaw Cinemas, um, The Bailarina's Tales. Check it out. The link is right here. And, and also, see you next time. Yeah. Oh, it'll also be on uh, iTunes Canada. iTunes Canada. Sorry, at the end of the month. Okay, great. Thank you, Nelson. Thank you. Thank you so much. Good luck. Yeah. I'm a black dancer. That's who I am. It's so much a part of my story. I first discovered ballet at 13. I had no exposure to it. She always stood out. She had what you can't teach and you can't learn. She had a fire. I didn't fit the mold. Based on my body type, pedigree, and background, I should not have been a part of one of the world's greatest ballet companies. There's a lack of diversity in ballet. Where are the black ballerinas? I don't think that the classical ballet world will ever accept me. I'm black, I have a large chest, I'm muscular. We knew that something was happening. 
She said to me, I'm in a lot of pain, Nelson. They diagnosed as a mid-tibia stress fracture. I don't think anyone truly expected her to be able to come back from that. I felt like I was gonna let down so many people. Ah! We were all sharing in the triumph of Misty dancing. When she realized she could represent something even bigger, it became less about just herself and more about what she can do to change the world. Through movement, I found my calling. Through ballet, I found my voice. My name is Misty Copeland, and this is my story. Giddy, giddy, boom, giddy.